When I was in the seventh grade, I was in an advanced maths class, Algebra 1. Well, this meant a problem for our administrators because now I had a blank spot in my schedule. So they worked and worked and worked, trying to find some way to get me to have a class. And they talked with the teachers, and they came up with the perfect class. They talked to Monsieur Benalbige and said, hey, can you take this kid in your class? He said, okay. The class? High school art. I remember that first day as a seventh grader, walking into the art class filled with all these rather intimidating, cool high school kids. Now, it was intimidating, but I was more overwhelmed by one simple fact. I suck at art. I am so terrible that I need a special learning support teacher to teach me how to draw. If, that, if they had the reading support for a student who has dyslexia, I need that for art. It's that terrible. So I knew that this was going to be awful. So I walked into there and I sat down and I'm just ready. What impossible project can you bring to me today? Well, the first was making a lino cut or a linotype. Now, I found one off the internet that looks quite lovely. The idea is you carve an image into this rubberized material and you put ink on it and you make a beautiful stamp. So I thought I, I can do that, I can carve out of this, so I thought I'd carve a giraffe. You know, something that looks kind of like a giraffe. What I got and said <clears throat> was this. Now, this is not the actual picture, but I gouged out the entire piece. There was nothing left. I failed. So the teacher said, well, let's try the next thing. How about charcoal portraits? And so the idea here is that you sit down with your partner and you each take a charcoal pencil and you make a portrait of each other. And I remember very distinctly looking at my partner who made something like this. No, that's not me. Um, but it's like this. Very nice. You can tell it's a person and all this. Well, mine, you know, he had dreadlocks. It was something like that. But it was terrible. Failed. Next project, sculpture. Now this one I really got into. I made a man-looking thing, and I spent months carving it, etching it, trying to add some detail, and it was starting to look like a real live person. I came in after school, I came out on Saturdays and worked for hours, and then I cut off its head. I failed. In desperation, the art teacher, Mr. Bijet, said, all right, I want you to go out and gather some sticks and leaves and flowers on the ground, put it on canvas, and throw paint at it. I don't know, some kind of Jackson Pollock kind of idea. So I threw paint at it, and it looked like some little kid had taken sticks and leaves and thrown paint at it. Failure. Well, eventually the teacher said, take these books and go read. And I read for about three months of my art class. That's what I did. I read Aesop's Fables, all of them. That was my directive. I ended up passing high school art more out of the teacher's mercy than out of my own ability. But it's not any more than I expected. I failed at art, utterly. But I knew I was no good at art, so it wasn't that much of a surprise. Now, unlike a lot of other failures, it didn't decimate me because I went in knowing I was no good. I left knowing I was no good, so it's no different. But I didn't try art again. I had solidified in my mind, I am terrible at art. A little bit later, I became a teacher. And as a teacher, man, you encounter students with failures. Some students would come up to failure with hope, with optimism, and some students with tears and depressions. I have vivid memories of my first year of teaching a student crying for one and a half hours over their 92% because it just wasn't good enough. This was Taiwan, so you know. Um, and I remember working with these students and saying, hey, you see that you just made? 
I can't do that. If I tried, it's beautiful. I understand your failure. And the students would look at me and say, yeah, well, this is math. That's art. Who cares about art? I said, I care. I can't do it. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. So I looked at my students, and as a good teacher, I said, what is it that I can do to help my students with their failure? And so I talked to them, I worked with them, I sat with them, I cried with them. I followed them through college years. I talked to their parents to find out how you can deal with failure. I saw those students that went on and came through their dejection and learned success. And I saw those that never did. And out of that experience, I have come up with three myths we have about failure and ways of correcting them. The first myth, that if you work hard, you can avoid failure. This is the idea that you can possibly eradicate failure from your life, so it never happens. It's like saying that I can live in Albania and learn to drive a car really, really well and avoid a pothole. Well, you can, but that doesn't get rid of them. Rather, I think it's more important to recognize that our life is made up of failures. Because if you work really hard, you're going to fail. Life is like a pyramid that we're building on all the time. And most of the bricks in our life are made up of bricks of failure. They say that as you're older, that you learn more about understanding the failure of people. I think it's because there's more bricks. Recognizing that failure is inevitable. And I think the first thing we have to do is recognize that failure is inevitable so we don't have to be afraid of it. The second myth, that if you fail over and over and over again that you are a failure. This eats at us. It infects our core until we feel like we have nothing left because we are failures. This is false. And it's false because as you fail over and over again, what really matters is how you view that failure. Did you know that science is defined much more by its failures than by its successes? If you look at the day-to-day -day life of any scientist, it's filled by far more failures and a few brilliant successes. Stuart Firestein writes about science and says the more interesting things are the failures that happen not the successes. And the reason that failures get more exciting to scientists is because the key is how you fail. Because as you fail, get curious. So what a scientist does is when his experiment fails, he goes, what, what went wrong? Was the theory wrong? Was there a mistake in the experiment? Or maybe this is a whole new discovery I hadn't even ever thought of. And as you consider your failures, and as you get curious about them, you start to redefine the importance of the successes and the importance of your failures. And the more and more you delve into it, the more you see that there's so much to learn from failing. If you get curious. See, if you get really, really curious about how you fail, you begin to see, what can I do differently? What does this failure teach me? I've learned the students that succeed and that go on and become something are those that looked at failure and said, why? What happened? How did that fail? How is it that I, how did it, that challenge my preconceived misconceptions, the things that I didn't understand or that I thought I knew and that I had to get changed? Those are the students that learn even more that when you're building your pyramid of experience, the successes and failures are of equal weight because they both are instructive. The last myth is the idea that the failure to succeed means that you are worthless. This is absolutely, totally incorrect. Because just because you don't succeed over and over again, if you keep working to succeed with curiosity, then you will be successful and it has nothing to do with your worth. The key is to be curious. Failure is going to be inevitable, so don't be afraid of it. Rather, if you look into your failures 
and you look at why they're happening and what's occurring, then you begin to see that there are new avenues to discover, new things to explore. When a scientist experiment goes haywire, and it doesn't work, and it fails, the scientist then may not ever be successful at that one experiment, but by being curious, they may find other things that were never considered. There are myriads of experiments that were done that failed, but produced profound changes in our life, technologies that never would have been discovered if the failure had not occurred in the first place, if they hadn't been pushed to look somewhere else. In addition, if we look at our own lives and look at the people around us, understanding what we can learn from failure can bring so much hope to a lost and downtrodden soul who feels like they can never succeed. And if you keep getting curious about your failures, you begin to see things a little bit differently. Sometimes find success where you never thought you could. I'm terrible at art, but I married an art teacher. Opposites attract, I guess. Um, but I had, after seeing my students fail over and over again, I knew I wanted to try something so I could empathize with them. I mean, I said I did, but let me try it for real. So I went to my wife and I said, teach me to make a bowl. So she did. We sat down, and after four hours of trying to carve this bowl into something, she said, okay, what do you want to do with it now? I said, I want to take the bowl, I want to wad it in a, in a ball, and smash it against the wall as hard as I can. She said, no, try again. So I said, okay, I've told my students this, I can't do that, I have to get curious. So I asked her, okay, tell me why it's not right, what do I need to do to fix this? And I fashioned bowls. These are my own bowls that I made. My wife took a picture before we had to leave them behind in Taiwan. They're not the best bowls in the world, but they're mine. And were it not for the willingness to be curious about my failures, I never would have made them. I want you to remember these things. When you come up against failure, remember these three things. That if you work hard, expect failure. It's going to happen. As you fail over and over again, get curious. Delve into why things are happening and don't be afraid of the failure, but grow from it. And if you fail with curiosity, you will be successful. May you, your life be filled with curios, curiosity, with active, interesting failures.